is Kerryon Johnson the full time answer for the Detroit Lions at running back? Let's talk about it. We back, Marty Street Sports Talk. It's your boy CJ Goodfellow. We back putting in that work. Y'all know what the business is, man. Support the channel. Just hit the subscribe and bell icon button. Don't forget we on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as well, too. All links are in the description. And um, you know, obviously the Piston the Lions, excuse me, worked out Marcus Gillingsley. They still got Zach Zenner on the roster. It's been talks that the Lions are linked heavily to trying to get Le'Veon Bell here. And do the Detroit Lions look at Kerryon Johnson as the full time um answer for they uh at the running back position, man. And really, this offseason will tell us a lot if they pursue Le'Veon Bell, if they draft another running back. And now in this age, running backs, they used to two, two, you know, two horse running backs, you know, two workhorses, man, or two complementary backs. You know, you got the power back, then you got the quick back, the shifty one. You see in the Rams, they found C.J. Anderson. He piled on the inside. When Gurley was healthy, he was able to do everything, and there was no need for, for, for no C.J. Anderson. You know what I'm saying? But now... You know, more of them is going to two backs. You mean, you got a couple single back backfields like Ezekiel Elliott, you know, um, even in, in L.A. with the Chargers with uh, Melvin Gordon. Now you got Eckler and then, you know, Justin Jackson from Northwestern kind of getting in there. Um, Pittsburgh was James Conner. And then before that was heavy, heavy Le'Veon Bell. Um, New York Giants, a heavy Saquon Barkley. And do I look at Kerryon Johnson as that same vein? I think so. If Saquon Barkley could be the every down back, I think – Kerryon Johnson, you know, is better in between the tackles and in between the guards running back than Saquon Barkley. Barkley get a lot of big home runs. Kerryon Johnson is a real grinder. You look at his limbs and how tall and linky he is, but, I mean, at, at Auburn, he was trucking guys. He was carrying, touching the ball 30, 40 times a game. And the Wildcat, the, you know, touching the ball from, the, from, from behind the center, shotgun, catching out the backfield. He got all – he got everything – that the Lions need to be a full time running back and to rely on. You always want to have insurance behind him. He can break the he can break the big runs. He can break he can he can you know break the tackles. Tough and you know Bob Quinn said he need to really uh, work on his durability. I don't think durability is an issue for him. You know what I'm saying? They look at him and say, oh he's lanky, he's he's skinny, he's you know weak and stuff of that nature. But I don't really look at it that way, man. I think I legitimately think that, you know, another offseason, he'll be straight. You know what I'm saying? But they actually drafted him to compliment LeGarrette Blunt to be the slasher and, and he kind you know, to be to be to be LeGarrette Blunt's polar opposite, but he could do he was running between the tackles better than Blunt. Now, could he put on put on some more weight and kinda put some more muscle on? Yeah. He could put some more lower muscle on. But some people's body is just linky and lean. You know what I'm saying? And he worked on his durability. Stuff happened. You know, Todd Gurley had durability issues going back to Georgia with his knees, and so did Sony Michelle. So did so did Chubbs for the Brown. All three Georgia running backs, and they're having successful NFL careers. But I don't really think they need another running back like Le'Veon Bell behind him. You know, I think they need another uh, firecracker running back that can that can really break big home runs off. You got Zach Zinner who could pick up the short yards. You got Johnson that could pick up the short yardage. We need a four three burner. You know what I'm saying? And that that's just my opinion. We need that four three burner or something like that in the backfield. Um that can give us that different dynamic. But other than that, you know, I think Kerryon Josh can be Zeke Elliott, you know. I think he can be um I think he can be Saquon. He could do what Saquon could do, what Le'Veon can do. I think he can be that type of running back, especially from an offense that ain't really run heavy. I mean, some of the offense get those running backs like the Cowboys gave DeMarco Murray the ball a record number of times in NFL history, 30, 40 t- touches a game or something like that. You know, 30, I don't say 40, but like 20-something, 25 touches a game. They rolled them. You know what I'm saying? The Lions like to throw the ball around. I think with Daryl Bevel, they'd be more balanced with the run, but they still going gon- to gon- throw that ball a lot because they ain't paid staff for $27 million a year, whatever he getting paid to um, to hand the ball off that much. But I think he... I think he could be in balance. I think he could be the guy. Also, you want to have insurance behind him, you know, not knowing, you know, knowing that running back get hit every every touch, you know. he Every time he touch the ball, maybe, or don't touch the ball, every time he take a snap, picking up blitzes, you know, picking up linebackers, catching it, you know, you know, whatever it may be you ask to do. So, they, they shelf life is short, and I'm with bringing in another uh, rookie running back. 
You know, I, I don't know about a veteran unless you got a really good, clean veteran you could find. But I, I'm with bringing in a rookie running back. You know what I'm saying? Him, you know, will carry on Zinner and a rookie running back. I can run with that. You're going to have a fullback, too. You know, I'm not interested in Gary Blunt coming back. Obviously, it just seemed like he a step or two slow, um, you know, now. But that just seemed to happen for the Lions. If he was with the Eagles, that motherfucker been running like an old Chevy Buick LeSabre. You know what I'm saying? With that 3,800 in that joint. Whatever Buick had it in there. But like I said before, you know, Bob Quinn identified him as a slasher. He didn't identify or want to use carry on as an every down back. Remember, they didn't even want carry on Johnson. They wanted Rashawn Penny to be their running back. And Rashawn Penny is nowhere near being an every down back if you see with Seattle. He got potential to break off big runs. But I really think, you know, the Lions may, they, they could be in the, uh, the Le'Veon sweepstakes, man. They could. Just going back thinking what, what Bob Quinn said, we, you know, they didn't identify. Johnson is every down back. They identify him as a slasher and, um, you know, as a complimentary back to LeGarrette Blunt. So they could be in the Le'Veon Bell sweepstakes, but I think Kerryon is, is pretty much all we need, you know, with some complimentary backs like a rookie, like Zinner or something like that. But, you know what I'm saying? Maybe they don't believe so. You know, Bob Quinn said once again he need to improve his durability, and he will do that, man. He will get stronger in the offseason. He seemed like a good level-headed kid. He don't seem like he going to do too much in the offseason. Hopefully, he don't get in no tr- more trouble. You know, take a vacation. Let his body heal. Enjoy the fruits of his labor for about, you know, six weeks, maybe two months being a running back. And get back to training and, and, and getting stronger in the legs, getting stronger up top. But I think we yet to see the best of carry, carry on Johnson. I really don't think we've seen remote, close to, to the best of carry, carry on. I think he could be featured out the backfield a hell of a lot more. I think, you know, he could be featured out on stretch runs. I think he'd be featured in between the tackles some more. And we really didn't see because what I seen at Auburn, I watched a lot of Auburn. I wasn't looking at his games at Auburn, but Auburn was pretty good. Now, I'm, I stayed down there close to the Auburn area and went to school down there. And I just watched some of their games. And one thing I do notice about, I did notice about him is that the more he gets the ball, the stronger he is. The stronger he is, you know. And the Lions never consistently gave him that rock where he can show that he's a real workhorse running back. That's the sign of a great running back. When the defense gets tired, they get stronger and stronger and stronger. You've seen it with Adrian Peterson. You see it with Barry Sanders. You see it with Emmitt Smith, Warwick Dunn, all the great running backs. Eric Dickerson, when that defense, was, their energy level dropped from you pounding and grinding, you get one, two yards, then three, four, five, and then you start seeing 20, 30 yards breaking off. Kerryon Johnson got that work house work bell running back ability he never got a chance to show it in detroit and on top of that because he was sharing the backfield in theoretic snatch with theoretic snatch with gear bunt on top of that he can catch the ball out the backfield too so he can do what alvin kamara could do he can do what Gurley can do out the backfield and the lions never really let him really show everything he can do he's really a swiss army knife he can put his feet in the ground and plant and, and beat linebackers you know, in route running and plan up field. He can do the, the Texas route, the option routes. He can do the whip routes that Theoretic can do. He can legitimately play the slot probably better than Theoretic at this point in his career. He can beat guys on the go route. He can run the comeback routes. He can run, you know, uh, the out and in routes and stuff of that nature. You can flex him outside and do a lot of things they do with Alvin Kamara. It's just going to be like, excuse me, it's just going to be like, you know, if the Lions offensive coordinator and they coaches is, is creative enough to really, you know, build the offense around him and just put their pride aside and let number 33 be the offense and take it away from Matthew Stafford. A lot of the time, the lot of the time is, oh, we pay Stafford $30 million, so he's going to be the star. No, sometimes, you know, you got to put the pride aside and let, you know, let your best player, you know, build your offense around your best player. And they do that, it can make it easier. Look at Drew Brees. They put nine and, and Peyton put their pride aside and let Alvin Kamara really, and Mark Ingram really be the basis of that offense. Okay, we're not going to drop back 17, 20 times no more, uh, 40, 50 times no more. Breeze can't do that no more. He's taking a beating. You know, his arm getting tired. Let's hand the ball off, do short short throws to Kamara, let him win. But, hey, it is what it is. Let me know if you guys think Kerry on Johnson is the answer. Uh, full-time workhouse, workhorse running back for the Detroit Lions. Um, it's your boy CJ Goodfellow, Motor City Sports Talk. I appreciate everybody for checking in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. 
Don't forget we on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Reach out to the email. DM me on social media if you got a business question, inquiry, or sponsorship. And don't forget.